today YouTube I'm going to be showing you how to as you can see here remote control your iPod Touch or HTC or HTC i.e. any Android device you like which I have here that's an HTC One S as I said or any iOS device that is jailbroken as I have here with an iPod Touch third generation the first one I'm going to show you mainly because my iPod is running on battery and I haven't got the chucks with me and secondly because it is the easiest and by far the best is this the iOS one which is for now I can get rid of that up there and get rid of this like that so the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is get this on your computer bear in mind it's fully interactable completely so the first thing you need to do go away battery is go to the first link that you have in the description which loads you up to a website called Typed VNC which is what you need and you need instantly there's I'm not 100% sure what it is about Mac because I haven't got a Mac I don't like using them so you need to download whether you have a 64-bit operating system or a 32-bit operating system and if you don't know how if you don't know what your computer uses then find out if you don't know how to find out send us a message through the channel and I will make a tutorial on how to view it and any other and all other computer spec that Windows can find so I my computer uses 64 bit so I click on that download it but because I've already got it here as long as I've already downloaded it which I have here then I'm not going to show you how to run it because it really isn't very difficult but whatever you do make sure you don't download the server which I will show you what not to do there we go if you click on custom setup when chosen it will come up with a menu that looks identical to this you've got type VNC viewer which is this and type VNC server which is what you use if you want to connect to your computer using a software like this instead of the iPod touch so make sure if you just click on this and click entire feature will be unavailable so make sure you click that because it makes the download go so much quicker and it means you don't get a stupid icon down here so all you have to do is make sure you do that and then run through it which I'm not going to show you how to do once you've installed it I'll close this for demonstration purposes. You're going to go in here and find Type VNC Viewer, which, if you're running on something else, will be under All Programs. You scroll down a very long way. It's not highlighted because I installed it a while ago. But, there we go Type VNC Viewer, which is this one here. Click on it. It's type VNC viewer and the website which you generally don't need because that's the link in the description. And type VNC viewer and run it. I type in this. This, I'm just going to quickly connect. That's the bit. Actually, one second, so it's not. This is the bit that's difficult. And because I've got that there, which I just failed at epically. I can't show you what you need to do because I need it. I need that window and it, and I don't think I can run it twice. Let's have a look, look actually. Maybe I can. Right then. So what you need is you need to find out your IP address that the iPod is using. The way you do that is go into settings. And one cool, unusual thing is that on the iPod itself, it now has a cursor. Which you probably can't see on my webcam because it's crap. But there is a cursor on the iPod. What you need to do is you go to your Wi-Fi. When it comes to your Wi-Fi, click on the blue arrow next to it. Then you need to get IP address, which is this one here. That is what you would put into here but if you just put that IP address in 
into there and click connect, it's not going to work. Because the iPod will say, go away, you're not meant to connect. Which is why you need the jailbreak. Because I'm not going to show you how to download or install. Which I might do in another tutorial. But what you need off of the Cydia market or whatever the hell it's called is this. Veen C or however the hell you want to pronounce it. It's a version of VNC designed for iOS. And to configure it, you just need to run it. There'll be no shortcut on your home menu, no nothing. Just got if you go into settings it's here. You've got to make sure that's there. If you find the cursor on the device itself annoying, then you can turn it off. Which actually I'm going to do because it makes it run a little bit quicker. And there's now no cursor on the iPod. And if you put in a password, it means no one else can connect. Which is what I've done because I can. And because my parents are kind of a bit weird. So as long as you make sure that's enabled, then it means it will set, it will allow connection. So if you go back. Now the unfortunate thing is this is quite laggy compared to the actual iPod. The actual iPod that moves instantaneously as if I was pressing it. But on the screen it is quite laggy. But that is because it's wireless and my wireless connection is crap. So as long as you make sure you put in this IP address exactly as it is in there. Then I'm just going to close this to stop any corruption. Go back to this one connect and then if you set a password you put it in now if you didn't that box won't come up and it will come straight up with this which is exactly what you just saw and now a few of the controls it's no keyboard controls as far as I remember except for normal 24 keys on a keyboard work as the normal keys on an Apple keyboard Mouse, however, scroll bar, scroll wheel, scroll it down, it brings up the uh, multitasking down there, scroll it back up, it doesn't do anything, scroll it upwards, it does nothing, scrolling it downwards does that. Sync, left click is clicking with, well, it's just normal tapping on the screen, right click, home button and can be used in any variation it is exactly like it so if you press it three times okay my computer's laggy but that's what it would it would go reverse colors instead so press it twice it comes with this and obviously you can still drag along with it like that right so now you know how to do that any of these you generally don't need unless apart from zoom that makes it a bit easier to see but all the other buttons like control alt windows key they do very little maybe the zoom ones you might want full screen you might want if you're doing a tutorial but I can't be bothered because I'm switching windows a lot and all you need to do is if you want to disconnect don't need to worry about any of these things because that's only if you're using a computer just close the window Right, now that we've done that, the next one I'm going to show you is how to view an Android device. Which I have here is my HTC One S phone. Which I have here. Right, now the first thing I'm going to show you is what you have to do on the phone to let it connect. Unlike with the iPod, you do not need any jailbreak, root, anything. All you need is settings. Unfortunately with this, the mouse makes no difference. But a good thing, and this one as you can see here, wired. Which means you can't carry it around, you have to have it connected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to do it off my phone manually, but you can see it on the screen, you can see my hand here. Hello. So you need to click on settings. And scroll down. Why the hell isn't the picture moving? Okay. 
I'm going to show you now quickly because I kind of have no choice. So I had to troubleshoot if the picture goes blank and doesn't decide to respond because as you can see I'm on a different page and the cam this isn't doing anything. So what you do is make sure it's invisible and just reload it again. That one, then it'll come up properly. Then you can see because my background is moving, it is slowly juddering. So what you do, back where I was, you go to settings. I have a pin, which fortunately, thanks to the lag, you can't see. You just go, scroll down and find, I think, developer, developer options. Yep. Then you need to select this top option up here, which is USB debugging, which is what any developer would use to implement their apps onto it, which is exactly what this is here. So you've got to make sure that's ticked. It might pay to do a restart, just in case, before you do anything, but as long as that's ticked, it really shouldn't make a difference. And what it also means is that when you connect your device the Y with the uh, not Wi-Fi the USB connection there is now this icon here which means debugging mode is turned on which it will say here right so let's get rid of that like that so now I'm going to close all this and show you how to do it yes I don't want to quit what you need to do is you need to download two things the Android SDK which you can get from the second link in the description and then clicking on download the SDK for Windows that's a direct link it doesn't I don't think there's one for Mac okay it would appear there are others for Mac except if you're running Windows which is better then that's what you need to download which I have already as this it's downloaded, let's run the installer as an administrator. If you're not an administrator then find someone that is or comment on this and I'll make another tutorial on how to give yourself admin using clever hacking shit. All you need to do is just run through this, very easy. Those personal preference Keep that the same, otherwise things just get complicated unless you use tool boot or whatever. Get that same. Say install. Hit next. And just make sure that's ticked because otherwise it's effort to run it. So finish. Right, there we go. What this is doing is fetching data from Google, which generally you don't need. But what you do need is these two tools, which I already have installed because you saw me use it. And what you need to do is just, on tools, tick the box. Do not download any of the others because they are tedious and annoying and a waste of space, unless you're an app developer, which I'm not. Just tick that box, tick box there, that ticks all both of them. If it's already installed, then it won't try and install it. When you click the button, if it does, if it isn't, then it will. So 9 times out of 10, the platform tools is which is the main one that you need. So you just click install. I can't show you because I've already installed it. But, there you go, and it may ask you to do terms and conditions and what have you, and it is quite a large file, so it might took me about five, six minutes, which really isn't, which is quite a while. So now, all you need to do is just make sure that's done. This bar would, once it's full, that will say installed there, and then you don't need it anymore at all. Third thing you need which is why I don't like using this because it involves two programs is Droid App Screen which is the actual program which I used to show my phone 
we need to scroll down. These are the um, spec that you need. Really, Java 6, which you can download from Java or Oracle Systems. Just Google Java and it's also the first one. And you need Android SDK. Um, that is the Android, the bit you downloaded earlier. And then the USB driver, which it installs automatically when you plug in your phone. So you download Droid App Screen here through, from Execution, which, as you can see here, is a very small file. Alternatively, it's also very popular. Let's download it. I already have it, so I don't need to download it. Because I have it here. All you do is just run it. That's it. Then this window comes up. Go away, phone. Right, it's already identified my phone because I've connected it before. But if you haven't, all you need are these two buttons here. Just press both of them. Not at the same time because you need two mouses, which would be really cool and confusing. All you need to do is click Restart ADB first, which restarts it. Uh, if your phone is connected and you've done everything I said then it will start instantly here. If not, click reload devices, it'll come up here and then just tick the visible box and then the dialog box pops up. Like this you don't need showing so you can get rid of that, get rid of that too and that. Now you can't interact with it at all. Nothing you click on here does anything. Except for these controls on the side, that doesn't affect the phone in any way. It doesn't change any of it. It changes what you see on here. Top one flips it, so you have it sideways or landscape. This one flips it upside down, back up. This one, which is useful but seems to bug mine out for some other reason, is the zoom, which changes how big the dialog box is. So you're from here to here. If I increase, if I decrease it to like 25%, then it's ridiculously tiny. If I increase it up to 300%, then it is way too big. I've got to go and find the button. So the easiest one, I have it on 100 because it fits my screen. Perfectly, like that. That, these two, that takes a screenshot which saves the PNG file to anywhere you want. This one takes a screenshot and recording and you can use it for records or what have you and this one this is like the nodes here that programmers use to check what your phone is doing how it's doing it and why it's doing it which you don't need at all you can't full screen this window, it is just as sized. Alright, that's the tutorial. Quite simply done. Nothing more to it. If you have any questions about it, please comment in the comment box below. And if you have any great comment, and subscribe to my channel. Well, not mine, but mine and will. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.